Hello everyone, welcome to another uh, enrichment building tutorial. This time uh, we're going to be making another bamboo feeder for uh, primarily calotrichids, but this one can be upscaled for uh, all sorts of larger primates as well. It is this bad boy. So it works from a central thread bar rod going through the middle, which enables everything to spin and uh, makes it far more dynamic and interesting. And it looks pretty cool, I think. So, with this being a slightly more complicated uh, enrichment item, you are going to need a few more tools. You're not actually going to need a huge amount more materials than uh, the earlier one that I uh, showed you how to make, but uh, you are going to need a few, few extra bits and bobs just to get it looking all flash and swish. So, firstly, materials. You are going to need your bamboo, obviously. I like to have two um, different sort of thicknesses, one to cover the thread bar and one to be the actual spinning sections. So uh, pick what works for you. I like to have a thinner ones, so you just got to make sure that uh, for the thread bar one, the central area, open area in the bamboo is wide enough that the thread bar will go through without too much hassle. And then your larger one, you just need to make sure that it's going to be wide enough that you can drill a hole through it and uh, it's not going to snap on you. Next up is a piece of wood for the central strut where you're going to hang your eyelet off. Uh, this is, uh, is from an old windbreak which I had kicking about and I wasn't using it anymore so I've cut it up to make stuff from it and uh, we're just going to be taking a little short section of this off. Any kind of wood really works, just obviously make sure that it is animal safe before you use it. Next up, we have M6 thread bar, and we're going to need four M6 nuts, nylock nuts. So regular nuts won't do the trick here. We're going to want nylocks, and what that means is, I don't know if you can see it, but they've got a tiny little nylon ring inside the nut, and what that means is that uh, you need to tension it with a spanner. You can't really tension it with your hands, certainly not with the larger nylock nuts. With these ones, you kind of can, but... Uh, not very easily and the reason for this is so that uh, when we put them on to the thread bar they're not going to move up and down no matter how much we spin it no matter how much the monkeys play with it the uh, nuts are going to stay in the position where we want them and then finally we're going to want a carabiner an eyelet and our hemp line or any kind of line will also work um, and that is it for the materials like I said, not a lot of extra bits from my previous bamboo tutorial, but uh, a couple of little pieces, bits and pieces. Now we're going to go on to the equipment. Okay, so as with our last one, we are going to want a drill and we're going to want a set of drill bits. Um, again, I don't believe that we're actually going to be changing the amount of the size drill bits that we're going to be using that much. Uh, we're going to stick to kind of the 3 mil and the 6.5 mil bits primarily. Next up is something to cut your bamboo with and something to cut your thread bar with. Both will cut very easily with a hacksaw. However, when you cut your thread bar, you may also wind up with uh, nasty, slicey, uh, spiky bits onto it. So you're going to want to use a file to smooth those off. If you have access to it and you are comfortable using it, an even better option is an angle grinder. These are awesome tools for doing anything to do with metal work, um, but you do need to know how to use them before you give them a try because they can also be incredibly dangerous. So be careful when you're using one, and if you do use one, especially with metal, always wear eye protection. Safety glasses, not regular glasses, because regular glasses will just shatter if something hits it, whereas these things won't, hopefully. And our final bits and pieces. Mole grips and a 10mm spanner. The mole grips are to hold onto the thread bar while we're tightening and the spanner is for tightening the uh, nuts. And that's about all there is to it. Um, I may suddenly realise halfway through that there's an extra little piece that uh, you might need and we'll just cross that bridge when we come to it, shall we? But without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay, purely because I'm lazy and I left my wood saw in the car, um, I'm just going to start by 
cutting off the section that we need for the central strut from the uh, pole and I'm going to use my circular saw as I said because I'm lazy and I can't be bothered to go out and get it. So we're just going to take off that ragged end first and then we're going to cut a little section. We need to make sure that it's going to be deep enough for the eyelet to sink in and there will still be space for us to drill a hole through for the thread bar. So we're going to want it no smaller than probably about there. So we'll give us a little bit more space. Booty. Okay, now that we have our piece drilled to size, we're going to just put a little pilot hole in the top using our 3mm drill bit and what that's going to do is that's just going to enable the eyelet to slide in nice and easily, fingers crossed. Okay there we go, our eyelet is in and we can draw, drill the second hole. Now as I said we're using M6 thread bar, what that means is it means that the bar is 6mm in diameter so we're going to want to go slightly larger than 6mm just to make sure that it fits. So we're going to use a six and a half mil drill bit. Now, while I don't always use uh, the clamps and things, I find it can be faster to work without them sometimes. With drilling, very often it helps to have it um, secured in, just to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere and you can focus entirely on drilling a good hole rather than worrying about holding your workpiece steady. Helps if you put it in forward. When you're drilling through something really solid, it can sometimes help to uh, every now and again just pull the drill bit out a little bit and allow the chips to clear. Otherwise, it can all get clogged in and compacted, and uh, it can make it a hard job much harder sometimes. With something this small, it's not really necessary, but it's a good tip to know. Okay, next up, we're going to be wanting to cut our ends to size, the rotating sections. We're going to need to cut them to size. So, what we're going to do is we're going to cut to here. We're going to make a cut here, and then we're going to cut halfway through again. And that will leave us two pieces of relatively equal size. So hold your workplace workpiece secure against your uh, stop blocks and booty. I'm just going to get a tape and just check where the halfway point is in this. Okay. So this is about 63 centimeters, so 630 mil, um, and therefore halfway is going to be about 31.5 which is roughly, yeah. We're not making furniture here. Bamboo is uh, an inherently uneven material to work with, uh, just by its very nature. So don't stress too much about getting it 100% dead on in the middle. The most important thing for this is that they roughly weigh the same. And there we have our two pieces. Because these are going to be spinning around all the time, it doesn't matter quite so much uh, about the ends uh, and as to whether they have the seam cover in them or not, uh, it doesn't matter tremendously. As you can see, I did accidentally get a bit of tear out on that last piece. Ooh, I'll show it so the camera can actually see. So I'll see how I go, but what I might do is I might just take a uh, file and just whiz over that real quick uh, just to make sure there's no sharp abrasive edges that could be dangerous to a little monkey or anything like that. Okay, so that's been sealed off and it's looking a little bit neater and there's no real sharp splintery edges anymore, which is perfect. Next stage is we're going to have got to find the midway point 
of each of these pieces. This is so that we can uh, drill through that for the central strut and uh, it'll mean that rather than it being top heavy and it always hanging in one direction, it'll be more inclined to swing and spin. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use one as a lever and we're basically just gonna make a seesaw. And we're just gonna keep trying it until we get, there we are. So that is more or less dead center. Always remember that just because it's halfway through doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be the dead center, especially with bamboo because the seals are obviously heavier. But that is our middle section and we're gonna to have to drill a wee hole through that. Firstly, we'll mark where our middle point is. Anything will do, drill bit, knife, whatever you've got, pencil. I don't have a pencil on me right now. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape that up. I found that uh, with bamboo, it can help sometimes if you tape it first and uh, it prevents a little bit of blowout. It doesn't stop it completely, but I find that it works a little bit better. So we're gonna get ourselves some electrical tape. Crazy, I don't carry a pencil, but I have electrical tape on me at all times. We're gonna remember our midway point. We're gonna put the electrical tape dead center in that. And we're just gonna really quick pop a little bit around it. That makes it very nice and easy for us to see the middle as well. And we're gonna clamp it again. When you're clamping bamboo, you've got to be really careful not to over tension it, because if you over tension it, you'll just snap your piece of bamboo lengthways and it'll be ruined and you'll cry. And I'll cry because I didn't tell you not to do it. So we're going to find the middle and we're just going to drill through with our six and a half mil drill bit. Okay, so that's that done. Let's take off the electrical tape and see how we did. Okay, that's not actually too bad for bamboo. That's a pretty good, pretty good set of holes. So we're gonna pop that one to the side and we're gonna do the exact same thing to the next one. Okay, so our two pieces have the uh, holes drilled in them for the thread bar now. We are well on our way to making this. Next thing up is we're gonna to need to drill the holes for the cocktail sticks. Okay, as I've been making a few things with these cocktail sticks, I already know that they're roughly three mil. So uh, that's the size drill bit we're gonna to need to get for them. Okay, we've got our drill bit in our drill. We're now gonna drill three holes for the kebab skewers to go into on either end of each of the bamboo canes. Like that. Just quickly do the other one. And there we have it. We are now set up and ready for the skewers to start going in. Everyone has their own way that they like of cutting bamboo skewers. I myself find that my Leatherman works best. So first things first, I'm just gonna nip off the sharpest edge of it and then we're gonna cut a piece. You just wanna make sure that you're gonna have a fair amount of space on either side of the bamboo so that you can stick plenty of food on, but it's not gonna be so long that the uh, leverage that it will gain will cause them to snap it. So, that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna use this one now as a guide to cut the rest of them. Okay, we now have all of our skewers. Some of them are slightly tapered at the edge from where they were initially bamboo skewers. That's perfect. With some of the others, dependent on the width of the actual section of that skewer, we may need to just chamfer a little, uh, not a point, but uh, a taper onto the end of them just to make sure that they slide through the hole nice and easily. So, this one's already got a taper on it so we can quite comfortably slide this one through. 
it's never that easily norm easy normally. This one doesn't, so we'll see how it goes. You can see there's no way that's getting in on its own, so we're just going to take our knife or file or whatever you want to use. Knife works well. We're just going to cut a little taper in them, and that will allow us for it to slide through nice and easily. Again, when you're using cocktail skewers in bamboo, you want it to be snug and tight. You don't want them to be loose, otherwise your monkeys will just pull them straight out again. So, in all honesty, I could have probably made these holes go a little bit further apart and it would have just made it a little bit more um, spacious for the amount of food to put on it. But enrichment is constantly evolving. You, you're constantly re going back to your old projects and working out how to refine them, how to make them better. And that's just something that I'll learn from this. And next time I won't uh, make them quite so close together. If they don't just slide in neatly and nicely like these are currently doing, don't be afraid to give them a good tap on your work surface just to ease them into the position that you want. That's one side done. Let's do the other. Okay, fantastic. They are now put together and ready to rock and we just need to cut the sections of bamboo to hide the thread bar and put it all together. Okay, so in order to work out how much thread bar you need, helps if you don't drop your mole grips. You get your trusty mole grips and you grip them onto the thread bar, you adjust them if you need to. Still needs to be a little bit tighter. Boom. And then we're going to put on one nut onto the end. I'm just going to tighten it through a little bit. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put all the things that we've currently already made onto it. Da, 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 da. like so and then we take our bamboo cane and we just measure it up so what I think would be a good way to do is I'll just cut this one segment out and then we'll cut that in half and we'll use that and that all that will do is that will give us a little bit of excess thread bar to play with it gives us something to hold on to while we're tightening everything up and we'll then just cut that off right at the end Okay, now we're going to measure it. 22 centimetres exactly. So, 220 mil. So, 110 mil is where we want to go. Helps if I actually mark it. Otherwise, uh, it is all for naught. Excellent. Now I just have to cut along that line there. Okay, now that our pieces are cut, we're just going to double check that they fit along the thread bar. Now in an ideal world I would have probably got slightly larger pieces for these cover-ups because then what would happen is that the other nylock bolts would have nestled nice and snugly inside the bamboo and you wouldn't have seen them except for the two on the end. But we have to work with what we're given so we can still make it and it will still be beautiful I promise. So we're going to take it all apart And then what we're going to do is we're going to tension this nylock down to about there. So you can either do it by eye and just keep checking it, or the other option is to get out your trusty electrical tape again, which I definitely had somewhere. Here it is. And we'll make a little mark so we know where 
to do it to tighten it too. There is never a bad time to have a piece of electrical tape in your pocket. Let me get the mole grips out again. Hold it on. And then we tighten it to that point. Let's just try and get this electrical tape off before it gets clamped by the nut. Ta da! And we'll see where we're at. Okay, we just need a little bit more. I was off by a smidge. The important thing to remember when you're doing this is that you want the uh, bamboo to be loose because you want it to be able to spin nice and freely. That should be okay. We'll give it a crack. If not, we will just tie and pull it down a little bit more. We're going to put the second nylock on and you want to make sure that it at least comes on enough for it to properly bite. Okay, so you can see neither of those are going anywhere, they're not going to loosen over time and it's still perfectly capable of spinning beautifully. Okay, so we've got it here, it's spinning freely and now we're going to put most of it together. So we're going to get the first piece of extra bamboo, I'm going to put that on Put in the central strut, slide that on, pick up the second piece of bamboo from where I dropped it on the floor, put that on, and we're going to need to now tension a nylock all the way down to the bottom of that section there. Okay, so let's do it. You know what? I've got a fast way to do this. So what I've done is I've just put a long socket head onto my impact driver. It's going to accomplish exactly the same thing as the, rent, as the spanner, but it's going to do it much faster. Of course, there is always going to reach a point where machines can't do much more, and you're going to have to go back to good old-fashioned hand tools and muscle power. Okay, that piece is on, these areas are nice and tight, well they're not too tight but they are a little bit tensioned and now we're just going to put our last nylock on and then it's just a matter of finishing it all up. Okay, and functionally, it's done. They both spin nice and neatly, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off this excess point that we were using to hold on to the thread bar. And as I said, a couple of ways you can do this. I'm gonna do it with the angle grinder, but um, you can do it with a hacksaw quite comfortably and you just want to finish it off and neaten it up with a file if you do. If you're going to do it with an angle grinder, you want to make sure that you're holding on to the thread bar at some point. What I've done is I'll just put my mole grips onto that last nylock and that's going to hold it nice and steady and allow me to cut it without too much hassle. Eyes and ears every time. You don't want to have a nasty accident with an angle grinder. Five minutes of looking cool is not worth losing an eye over. Okay, now that is done. I'm just gonna clean that up with a file quickly and we'll put the string on and we're complete.
that's really bloody hot. Okay, so they're both spinning nice and neatly. I've just checked that. We're going to put on our line now. So I did show this one in the last video, but we're going to be doing a double overhand to make a stopper knot. And if you've never done double overhand stopper knot before, uh, it's dead simple. What you're going to do is you're going to run your line through your eyelet and back along its length. You're then going to take that end, hold your finger like this, and you're just going to wrap it once and twice around, and then you're going to pull your finger out and the line is going to go through the hole where your finger was. And you're just going to tighten it all up. And you have a nice little rolling loop. I would not recommend this knot if you are planning on taking a piece, taking the piece of rope down at any time in the future, because it doesn't, uh, it, it, it doesn't um, take very well after a long period of time. It will just seize up, and you'll have to cut the rope. So, wouldn't recommend it for that sort of thing. But for little jobs like this, where we want to have it looking neat and tidy and cute, um, it works very, very well. And then we're going to do the exact same thing at the other end. And we're going to fit our carabiner to it. Da -da 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 -da. Boom. Just going to roll this a little bit in the other direction because we want to try and remove this kink if at all possible. This is not the kind of kink that we like. Boom. And there we have it. Dead easy. I'm trying to chimp to do it. Well there you have it. Quick, simple, couple of uh, pretty engaging uh, colour tricket enrichment. As I said at the start of this video, if you swap out the bamboo for thicker part chunks of wood, and uh, the cocktail sticks for I use hooks from like um, like like an eyelet but uh, open so not a fishing hook but a, uh, a kind of a, a wall hanging hook um, and you put that into the wood instead you can make these uh, much larger for things like I've, I've used them on colobus I've used them with macaques I've even used them with fruit bats and they've worked quite well with fruit bats as well so uh, give it a go see how you find it thank you very much for watching